This video is sponsored by educative.io. More info at the end. 30 day lead code challenge, day number something, week four, day five, so what, day 26, I think. Longest common subsequence. Let's just jump into it. Given two strings, return the length of their longest common subsequence. For example, for ABCD and ACE, uh, we have a subsequence here ACE, which appears in both strings. In this and that, there is nothing in common. For example, in this and uh, that, there will be a common subsequence Camille, K A M I L, and it's also here actually as a substring but it doesn't matter here it's also still the, the answer is five because the longest common subsequence is coming unless oh, there is also r no it isn't the order is bad cramil uh, is bad oh actually it is okay cramil is the, okay as well here let's increase the font we are trying to find something like that and one solution would be o of two to length of the first string times I don't know, then one plus then two. This would be to iterate over all the subsequences of one string and check if it is also a subsequence of the other string. It's not that hard, but there is a better version. Uh, well, the category of dynamic programming is something that if you are able to solve a problem for smaller input, then from using this, can you solve a problem from bigger input? If yes, then DP will help you. An example of this is we have ABCDE and ACE as in the first input. If somebody told me what is the common subsequence, longest subsequence of those two shorter strings, so if there was some um, already black box that tells me what is the solution for this pair, a shorter one, then I can figure out that the solution for this is the solution for that plus one because I will also take character E at the end. If those are two different characters, then I will say the following. They cannot match, so either I need to match ABCDE with AC. Again, this uh, I ask that black box, DP, about it, or this with that, because E with F will not be matched. So E or F will not be used in the subsequence. That's, the, that's some intuition. For more information about thinking about DP, I recommend my DP lectures on YouTube. So one solution is, uh, let's say, solve, actually, even here. If text one empty or text two empty, return zero. And after I'm done with this, I will write an iterative version as well. If text one back is equal text to back, if two last characters are equal, like last character in first and in second, then remove it from both. Return one plus, I'm just quote a long name, common subsequence, text one, text two. Otherwise, if those are different, either I will remove one character from the first string or from the other. What's the easiest way to do that? Can, should I use popback? Maybe string return maximum of two things. Either this, let me copy paste, of text one comma string. I hope I can do it like that. Begin text two and minus one. This should take a string without the last character. Either from this or uh, just copy paste text two and the same from text one. Don't copy paste at home. That's ugly. I mean, we, here we can make a for loop over two things. Right now it is exponential because we run smaller strings, smaller strings, and you will get to the same sub problem multiple times. You can uh, like think what happens if you start with A B C D E and something like that. You will try to remove J, 
to get to this situation and then remove e then this is why one way you get to that sub problem but also if you first remove e and then j you again get to this sub problem and of course we can say that we memorize everything so return remember return answer of a pair text one text two is this and this is some kind of map from pair of string string into int how this works uh, but it's still quite slow because this map uses strings it isn't perfectly efficient we can do better and i'm not even talking about an ordered map time still time limit exceeded oh because i don't use it if answer contains let's try to find it answer find a pair text one text two if it exists not answer end then you return it now it's polynomial not exponential it's still ugly some optimization you can use once i get accepted i'm stopping the timer i made a mistake expected one found two what's up with that i can increase one only by Oh, uh, answer, I popped back. I shouldn't have done that. D this should be the previous pair. So string string state or my state, this state. I'm tr here by mistake. I'm remembering. And by mistake, I'm remembering uh, like I, I removed the last characters I found out oh for that shorter test the answer is something like five and then I say one plus this is six and for that shorter state I think the answer is six <coughs> uh, I believe this should be already what quadratic but for there are let's compute the complexity there are O of n square possible states. Each of them is prefix of one initial string and prefix of the other, and is, let's say, limit for length of a string. And for each of them, I do something with those strings. And sadly, I, I use linear complexity, uh, actually with not an order, but just a map, it's n log n. So this, for each of them, each of them I handle in that complexity, so in total, n cubic times log. One possibility to improve it is to pass those strings by reference or keep, keep, keep them global. Then when you pop back later, you need to retrieve this character in some way. Uh, some better trick for that is to just use lengths. Lengths of those strings. Uh, like here it will be dot .length, dot .length, because the length, if you know that the starting string is A, B, C, D, E, then by saying prefix of length 4, you already define what we are talking about. Uh, so you can improve that. I, do I want to do it? Let's say so. Why not answer? Again, I can do it here. My state. But here I shouldn't run, uh, find a substring or pass this by value. So this is still cubic. Actually, it's now like n square. For each of n square states, I have n for handling the string plus log of n to access a map of pairs. I can change to another map, whatever. And one last thing to do is to pass this by reference so that this would run in constant time or lock for map it's small anyway can we do it uh, well first of all i can do it here i cannot i believe modify this maybe i can i think lead code will say oh something is wrong 
Mm. So uh, let's say I will just pass. So this should be private. To whatever. Uh, my LCS. LCS is longest common subsequence of just length. And here I will say return my LCS of len1, len2. And this will keep using, let's say, global text1 and text2. I will rewrite, I will get those values here. Because, you know, when you say that I'm got down to prefix of length 5 and 3, I don't need to know all the characters. I will only try to access the last character in one and the other. This. Now, I'm rewriting what is there. And 1 is 0 and... or And 2 is 0, return 0. This is that case. My state of len 1, len 2. Use this directly. If text one, I'm trying to write that of len one minus one. Let's call that the last character on of one prefix and the other. It's one plus CS of things shorter by one. Otherwise, do this. Max of my LCS of len1 one minus 1. I can either remove one character from the first string saying I'm not going to use you. Or the other or the other way around. And remove everything here. It's generally better to comment it, not remove it. Now this is n squared times log of n. My LCS and one is not there. Right now, given those two strings that don't do not change, my function my LCS finds the longest common subsequence of one prefix and the other prefix. The other thing is we could do that from the end. Stop at 13 minutes of, well, improving on this recursive solution with memorization. But if you know anything about competitive programming, this problem would be much, much easier for you because we know that we can just go from left to right. Like this boils down to dp of uh, len1 and len2, right? And for zero zero, it's easy to define. Let's see how much how much different it will be. Uh, let's say do I want another function? Okay, uh, this will be iterative. The p of string a and string b. Iterative the p. No, I'm not using this. I'm not using that either. My whole solution will be over here. There is length of one thing, length of the other. I'm using shorter variables for convenience in dp because there will be a few dimensions. dp of 0, 0 starts as 0. In the moment, I will create this array dp for everything, for every length in one and the other. Uh, I have this and what, what can I do with that? This is a push kind of dp where I use this value to compute future ones. Or, okay, that, that's stupid. Let's, let's use the same logic to make it easier for you to understand. Never mind. If a of i is equal, then let's say that dp of ij means that I'm now looking at character i and character j. If this is equal that, dp of ij is equal dp of i minus 1, j minus 1. 
this there will be some outside of the array error sadly else this is the same thing that happened in recursive version at the end return dp of n minus one m minus one And this is a two-dimensional array in the p of n m, and I would expect you to write something like that if you know iterative dp, and then to handle those outside of the array errors. But it's slightly better to say that dp of i j is um, is what happens LCS of first i characters in a string a and first j characters in string b. Okay, and then when you want to compute dp of dp of 0, 0, it's just 0. It's not that it depends on first characters because it's LCS of something empty and empty. So actually here, after we are done with i and j character, we are at this position. Like if you're done with 0 and 0 of character, you want to save that into dp of 1, 1. If you have experience with this, you won't even think about it much during implementation. During a contest, I would just start from this. N and M. And this is N plus 1 by M plus 1. So this is, if you prefer, arrays over vectors. Do I need to do anything more? Um, I'm not defining dp of 0 something. Uh, but by default, actually, dp of anything, anything is zero by default if you don't set a value. So things not computed here, they will be equal to zero. I believe this should be fine already. And it's just of n square. Your answer is zero. I should say one plus. Submit. Iterative version leads to much, much shorter code. Here, if you don't count comments, uh, then it's what, three lines plus this, 10, 15, instead of starting, unless you are very good with recursive version too, uh, starting with this and then improving that. My final recursive solution, actually it wasn't that long either, like this plus that, how much is it, uh, 20? a bit over 20 lines. But iterative is always more concise and it's easier to understand the complexity. Here you just see it's n for loop of size n times for loop of size m. In this recursive version it isn't that easy to, to say. There are still methods for that, but not that trivial. My code along with all previous problems is in GitHub repository, link in the description. And that's it about this problem. I hope you enjoyed this longer explanation uh, because well I'm trying not to just rush through a problem solve it in two minutes because I could do that quickly just because I saw this problem a lot of times in the past it's very well known thing in computer science and in competitive programming all that being said shout out to the sponsor of our video of this video educative.io platform with programming courses uh, with small exercises. This one is grokking the coding interview about patterns. And what do we have here? Oh, I actually showed this yesterday. So let's see some other lesson introduction. Why not? Uh, it's, it's very interesting because there are small pieces of code. You can even run something uh, from time to time. And there are examples. And a very nice explanation of patterns and noticing them. So check out the course. But the main point is there is a giveaway of their courses, educative.io courses for free. Uh, there are a few days left, so just register there and try to win a free subscriptions for three months. Thank you, Educative.io, for sponsoring the video. And thank to you for, thanks to you for watching the video and hitting a like if you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.